Hi, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com and also healingsuicide.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, also a channel, an energy worker, a medium. I uh, do all kinds of different things. And um, I just realized uh, today that I don't have an, a series on Chiron natal aspects. I did um, part of a series on True Blackman Lilith natal aspects, uh, which you can check out. Um, but anyway, I wanted, to, I wanted to do some. So this is on uh, Sun Chiron natal aspects. So first of all, uh, if you're not familiar with my approach to Chiron, go look up the two kind of Chiron videos for me on YouTube that I use to start it all. Like, like there's houses and signs, but go look at Chiron, um, a new view of Chiron and also Chiron and energy management. There are two videos. I think a total over a half an hour. So there's a little time investment there, but it really explains some things in this video that might not make total sense if you haven't been exposed to my approach before. So um, with Chiron, I'll just give you like a little headline here. Um, most astrologers approach it as um, this marker of wounding and healing, and you can be wounded or you can help people who have the same wound, thereby being a wounded healer. And um, I kind of come at it from a different approach uh, because I want you to understand that that to me feels like a dichotomy, like a false dichotomy that we might get stuck in. I can either be in pain or I can try to help you with pain, but I can't help myself with pain. So I approach Chiron instead because there is a way to get beyond this wounding but you have to understand what wounding and healing are and think of Chiron differently. So Chiron as an energy antenna. You know, think about the Uranus in your natal chart as part of your psyche, representing part of your psyche that creates freedom. It's like the freedom creation or the rebel, right? Think about the moon as uh, uh, the nurturer and the feeler and the part of you that senses, you know, emotions and, and needs to create safety and happiness. Well, Chiron in that case, is the part of you that senses energy. So, so does Moon, in a certain sense, so does Venus, and of course, so does Neptune. But Chiron is this very specific thing that activates a Chiron woundedness within you. So like an energy antenna picking up on certain frequencies when they pop up in the world around you, or in environments you're part of, or in specific other people or in groups of people. So the idea with a wound, for, from my perspective, and this is what those other two videos really go into depth with, uh, as well as my book, Chiron 2012, The Aquarian Age, The Key and How to Use It, and the Chiron Natal Report, which I'm recording this in December of 2019, and for the rest of the month, it's 20% off if you're into that. The link is in the description um, below. Um, uh, anyway, lots of resources on Chiron, but um, the wound of Chiron if you're not familiar with my approach, you've been exposed to the wound as uh, an inadvertent poisoning and he can't die, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he gives up his own life, whatever. Um, sorry, just I've told this story so many times. For me, the original wound is when Chiron is rejected at birth by his mother. If you think about that, that's really significant. So it's important to look at. So for me, the Chiron wound is held by an, an inner infant. So when Chiron in you gets activated, you know, by transit, by other people, by situations, whatever, you know, an inner child takes over who probably knows much less than you do, who might feel unsafe or not, you know, so that's my approach to Chiron. So you, know, you can check out all my other Chiron materials to really get in depth with that. Um, regarding aspects in the natal chart, whatever it's aspecting, and I don't use all the minor aspects. So if I go through these aspects and then you write me and say, what about the biquintile or the sesquadri? I, yeah, the, the minor aspects I use are Quincunx and semi-sextile, essentially. Uh, the 30 degree semi-sextile and the quincunx 150. And then otherwise I use conjunction, sextile, square, trine, and opposition. So anyway, aspects in the natal chart between different bodies kind of give us two layers of a story. One is a conversation within your psyche between these two different parts of you, but then also how these things will show up for you in the world around you, including with other people. So quite often with your natal aspects, people walk up to you and, and they are, or they embody one side of it. And then you find out through a dynamic, something about being the other side of it and you thereby learn about it. But, but everything outside reflects what's going on inside. So with the sun, so let me just say that, with the Chiron is the energy antenna, the sun is the center of personality. The part of you, if you're all the elements in your chart are representing a meeting going on inside your head and your heart, the sun essentially needs to be the final decision maker running that meeting. So central to identity is everything involving the sun. And essentially you gotta have your sun making healthy 
decisions to create sanity and clarity if you're going to be sane and clear. So when Chiron is an aspect of the sun, the energy antenna of sensing others' reactions to you or how you may get the sense of not being worthy of love and support or safety triggered, that fear of the inner child. Remember, Chiron's original wounding is feeling rejected at birth, which you might have some version of. Um, some part, some way of being or some part of you may not have been loved, accepted, or you know, really celebrated. You didn't feel safe and, and worthy and um, welcome. It doesn't have to always be your whole existence, but sometimes it is. Um, like Chiron's rejected by his mother, his very existence makes her say, get this monster away from me because he's born as a centaur and she didn't realize that would happen. So son Chiron, the identity that you develop on a regular basis is engaging with the energy antenna. So in certain ways, how you seek to make cogent decisions to develop sanity and clarity and of course, therefore, the solar expression, including um, vitality, so health, and creativity, and owning, having an opinion, owning it, expressing yourself, all the sun things, is wrapped up with and affected by the Chiron energy antenna. So the conjunction, let's start there. The conjunction is they are joined at the hip. So you are Chiron. Your whole identity project as a human living a life is wrapped up with Chiron. I would say eight degrees of orb for the conjunction. You might feel it with eight and a half or nine degrees, you know, especially if there are other planets between it or asteroids or something or, or angles even, but, um, but typically eight degrees. And it means that you cannot talk about your sun without talking about vulnerability. So the assertiveness of the sun, the creative creativity, the willingness to flow, to show opinion, to present a unique contribution, to take up space is wrapped up with the vulnerability of, I don't know if I'm welcome, am I worthy, can I do this? So some conjunct Chiron people, natal, have that in the natal charts, like let's say it's in Taurus, you'll read about what a Taurus is like, you won't identify. Let's say you're in Aries, you won't identify it, it's like that's not really me, because Chiron modifies how your son is expressed. You're gonna be sensitive preemptively to how others respond to you, so you might edit your behavior to make sure you don't stand out too much, but that's what the sun tries to do, right, normally, to make sure you don't get rejection for showing up, for having an opinion, for being creative, for laughing too loud, right, sun, kind of uh, a joyful energy too, vitality. So that's sun conjunct Chiron. You are Chiron. You carry Chiron everywhere with you. All of your identity is wrapped up with the need to process the Chiron wound to deal with vulnerability and embrace it. And like I said, the Chiron one can be healed. That's why I've developed all these materials to work with this. Um, but you have to kind of turn that fear of rejection into an embrace of vulnerability and then embrace your sensitivity. And that's, as far as I can tell, a spiritual maturation, a one version of it. So that's the conjunction. The sextile triggers or pokes. I always think of the sextile as somebody tickling you or even um, not tickling you but coming close and you kind of feel it like you're, you're responding. Uh, one thing with the sextile I, I kind of overuse in my teaching as an image is you're um, reading a book, minding your own business, and, and your friend comes over and sits down next to you and just starts tapping you on the shoulder. Tom, 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 Tom. And you might say, oh, it's cute, whatever. It doesn't go away. You have to respond, right? You can respond with um, stop it or what or hey, what do you need? But you have to respond. That's the energy of a sextile poking, triggering, stimulating until you have to respond. So what that means is sun, center of self, identity, is being stimulated all the time by energetic input, the emotions of others, the suffering, the pain, the whatever of others. The vulnerability, if someone's feeling sorry for him or herself, you're going to be it's constantly triggering your son. So you might try to shut it out. You might respond angrily, or you might say, okay, what do you need? Same thing as if somebody were poking you, trying to get your attention. But Sun Sextile Chiron says, you are all the time aware of this. Doesn't mean you respond well or kindly or that you want to be open, but you're, the way you develop identity cannot ignore the constant energetic input. And I think of sextiles, um, let's say you respond one way or another when you have to respond. Let's say that it's, well, any response, you might then get more of it. <laughs> you might say, oh, okay, what do you need? And then you get the full 
you know, full on measure of whatever the energy is the person wants. And then you might have a different response and then you get more. So sextile and that triggering can actually go back and forth. And it can therefore be over stimulating. So I invite you to be grounded and check your responses. To have boundaries is part of the key with the Chiron sextile to the sun or any other planet. Um, because you're going to respond, it's going to respond more. The other person, the situation will respond more. So it can actually create this uh, kind of a uh, stimulating feedback loop that creates a lot of stress. And so the best thing is to intentionally respond and also say, oh, I think I'm done for the day. Let's come back to this another time. So that's a sextile. Sometimes feels like you can't get away from it and it might be overstimulating at time, like you've had too much caffeine, something like that. Now the square, oh, and, the, and I would say six degrees on the sextile for orb. Now with the square, I'd use eight degrees. My orbs are pretty standard, except for the nodes of the moon, um, which, I, which I typically use 10 degrees for the hard aspects, as, as an aside. But uh, the square brings pressure and friction. Think of tectonic plates pressing against each other. They're moving along different vectors, but they're up against each other, right? That's one image. Another image is somebody wants to help you do what you're doing better, but they want you to do it differently or do a totally different thing. So you're doing it wrong is one way squares feel and can, can manifest. And also people saying, if you did it this other way or for these other reasons or at this other time frame, you'd be better off. So what you're inclined to do with your son may feel constantly pressed against or pressured by, or friction comes in, or criticism comes in from chironic sources. People who are in pain or suffering, people who are energetically sensitive. So wherever your son is in your chart, you're just minding your own business, doing your thing, but you constantly are aware of somebody else's pain, suffering, vulnerability, sensitivity. So with a square to sun and chiron natally, you have to figure out how you're going to respond to the reality of chiron and other people, dot, 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 because it's, your relationship with vulnerability, sensitivity to energy and emotion, and pain and suffering. So in that kind of case, you might feel like you always have to address others and help them heal. You might feel you're constantly slowed down or inconvenienced by others wounding or neediness or sensitivities or something like that. So when you can, you can overcome this and embrace healthy versions of Chiron by responding with compassion but again all chiron things call for boundaries so do what you need to do and be available to help others or have a compassionate response but then also do what you need to do and come back you know so that's a sun square chiron and that can be you might you know you might attract people who are super sensitive and you might part of you might say oh my god why is this always ha you know let's say you're um let's say your son's in leo what square leo oh my gosh can I do astrology math, Leo? <laughs> and your Chiron's in Taurus, let's say that. Uh, <laughs> Chiron spends most of its orbit in Pisces and Aries, and then a lot of time in Taurus and Aquarius. So there's gonna be a lot of people watching that video with Chiron and Taurus. So let's say your son's in Leo, you need to shine, you need to express yourself. Well, somebody in your life has Chiron and Taurus, that person needs to go slow and not improvise. But your son in Leo needs to improvise. So you might find yourself constantly feeling like somebody's Taurus problem is slowing down your shining need, your need to express yourself. So anyway, you might always feel, right? But if somebody like that does hold that space for you, it's about your need to respond to pain, suffering, sensitivity, vulnerability in better and better ways. But because it's square your son, the center of your identity, the part in your head that needs to be making decisions, you might feel it's a drag on the system but they're in your life to help you learn how to evolve through incorporating information of a chironic nature. Like your son might charge ahead and that other person might always be there to say, ah, but what you're doing may affect other people. So there's like a growth thing in there if you can take what is essentially constructive criticism. Moving on to the trine, and again, that's eight degrees of orb I'd use with the square. Um, with the trine, to uh, from Sun to Chiron, I think of trines as um, like these open conduits of information. And I often think of the two planets involved might, might support each other. You'll hear that trines are supportive and boosting uh, in your astrology studies. And, and uh, I also think of it as cheerleading. 
where whatever one is doing, the other says, looks great, keep doing it. Um, and if, if what the first one is doing is productive, then there's energy flow and they're supporting each other in productivity. But if it's lazy and complacent and whatever, then that will be you know, heightened. So wherever the sun is, it's doing its thing. It's receiving a lot of information. It's not the stimulating poking of the sextile. It's just this ever-present flow into the inner decision maker, the sun, of other people's sensitivities and issues and things like that. You might come up with a lot of creative solutions, feeling inspired by, oh, my son wants to create something. Of course, your house and sign of your son matters. Uh, but let's say your son is inspired to do something and you see an opportunity. Oh, there's a chironic thing I could support, I could help or whatever. We think of sextiles and trines as not negative, but they can be with this ever present stimulation. So again, boundaries are important, but essentially what your son is good at has, you have the opportunity to be informed by Chiron. Now I haven't talked a lot about Chiron being a marker of uniqueness and, and in a certain way, innovation, like, like shifting perspective on certain things to use old tools in new combinations to address old problems is one of the innovative, resourceful things about Chiron, but also coming up with new solutions to old problems is part of Chiron too. It's not the invention of Uranus, but it's got something in common with it. So with the trine, the Chironic interesting unique solutions, the sun might pick up on and have a lot of uh, creative innovation in a certain way. Okay. Um, with the opposition to Chiron, that means that whatever your son is doing, you may feel blocked by Chironic situations and others. Now, some people will feel like they have to struggle or fight against something that opposes uh, their, their planet. Meaning when it shows up in the form of other people, you're trying to do your thing and you feel constantly like the generator on your passion is unplugged by the need of another person or something like that, Chiron opposing sun. So some people will feel defensive when that aspect plays itself out in your life. Some people will feel caught like a deer in the headlights, so to speak. Caught off guard or frozen in place. I, I don't know what to do. And even if you intellectually know, well, somebody's having an issue, I could help that person or not help that person, right? Or I could, I could um, take some time right now to be there for somebody or not, or I could do it later. You intellectually have that understanding because you're a smart person. But energetically, somebody else's need may hold you in place. You may feel, like think of, a, think of an opposition, two people facing each other. Well, what if we stood facing each other and you put your hands on my shoulders and I put my hands on your shoulders? We could actually hold each other kind of fixed in place. Yes, one of us could pry away, but there's this thing of like holding each other in this dynamic. And if you have been unsure how to respond to pain and suffering in the past, you know, you might be confronted, right? Blocked, challenged, feeling confronted by it in front of you now. You might have in the past said, yeah, I want to help. And then felt like you just lost a bunch of energy, time, resources, or whatever. So anyway, when the, 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 the long and short of it is, Chiron opposing sun natally, you have to figure out how to understand where somebody else is coming from, what somebody else needs, the nature of pain and suffering, how to be compassionate without abandoning your whole existential project, like right? without dropping everything. You have to figure out how to, you know, how to do that. Um, but you're going to, in certain ways, potentially, some of you hearing this with sun opposite Chiron, will just pour energy toward the pain of others. And you'll feel it's noble and you'll love them, right? I'm not saying it's not noble, but you'll have that. We have that image of being compassionate and helping people is noble. Uh, but I would offer you that being compassionate is actually a state of loving acceptance and actually has nothing to do with doing. Compassionate service is about doing. <laughs> but compassion itself, I think we, we sometimes tie together with doing. So when we feel somebody else's pain or suffering, we, we act on it. And then we might feel like we lose energy, time, whatever. So essentially, you have to learn how to encounter the pain and suffering of others and learn how to work with it without being dragged into some endless process with it, which again, more about boundaries. 
somebody goes, I need you. Like, let's say you're, um, let's say you're Chiron's in Pisces, your son's in Virgo. Uh, if you're Chiron's in Pisces um, and you're not super young, like if you're an adult with Chiron and Pisces, that means you likely have Pluto and Virgo opposing it. But I'm going to leave that out for a minute. There's a thing in many lifetimes about being there for people and being perhaps derailed by their pain, suffering, and endless needs. But let's say your son's in Virgo and your Chiron is in Pisces. Well, Chiron and Pisces, you're going to pick up on a bunch of pain and suffering in the world around you. People, animals, nature, it could be anything and everything. You're going to pick up, pick up on it. Sun in Virgo needs to be very specific about fixing things or helping or healing. So how can you be aware of everything, but also be specific and directional, like very intentional and discerning with your time and energy? So let's say you open up and you say, oh, I can't handle feeling everybody else's pain. I have to work. I have to work to help them. Well, then you'll spend your energy and you'll become burned out potentially. Well, what if you don't do that? Well, then you'll continue to feel it. So going back and forth and honoring both parts of you is the point. So that's the opposition. Again, eight degrees I would use with this. And then I'm going to cover briefly with a quincunx and the semi-sextile. Quincunx being 150 degrees, semi-sextile being 30. And they're kind of like complementary, right? Um, they add up to 180. So um, the quincunx, you can feel thrown off course by this. I actually have this aspect, sun, quincunx, chiron. And so if you're doing your sun and you're organizing your sense of self, you might feel derailed by the needs and suffering of others. Now, ideally, you have to learn to go back and forth as if it's a less stressful aspect. But some part of you might feel that you're being derailed. Uh, like you're doing your son, and every time you do your son, it's ruined by some Chiron issue. So then you have to do the Chiron thing and be there for others or deal with your own vulnerability. But that seems to be in your own psyche that your son can't exist. That's a quincunx, thrown off course, right? So, and I, even just in my own experience, I've had to really work hard at this to give the Chiron energy and then to come back and give my son energy, to willingly go back and forth. And the transition is hard because it's a quincunx, but you can heal it. What people typically do is let one of those energies lay fallow or dormant because that transition is exhausting and painful and confusing. The, the quincunx, they don't speak the same language, right? Same with the semi-sextile, roughly 30 degrees. It might be a little different. It might be a little different as far as being thrown off course. It might be like this constant irritation next to you because you know, um, it might be a little different feeling, but the idea is I don't know how to have these two parts of me exist. So when, when I am one of these energies and somebody else shows up as the other energy, I don't know what to do. So that's what those minor aspects. So again, you can find out what's going on in your own natal chart with the Chiron natal report. It's an original report that, uh, that I wrote over some years and um, uh, it opens minds and hearts and teaches you a new way to think about Chiron as energetic sensitivity and how to have boundaries and deal with your vulnerability and emotions, you know, in a world which is afraid of pain and suffering and vulnerability. Uh, so anyway, you can see the natal report there and also the book Chiron 2012, The Aquarian Age, The Key and How to Use It. So you can see all that at tdjacobs.com. Thanks for your attention and uh, take care of yourself.